This is Craig with Carshalton Advisory. In this video, we're going to go through the Excel Expert 4.1 practice tasks for the Microsoft Office 2016 study guide for Microsoft Excel Expert. Let's get started. First thing we need to do is open up the Excel Expert 4.1 workbook. Now that it's open on the Sales V Advertising Worksheet, create a linear trend line for the display chart. So there's a couple of ways you can go about creating a trend line. Um, the first thing you can do is once you've highlighted the chart, you can see, well, in fact, a chart is a floating object that floats effectively above your worksheet. Once it's selected, the first thing you'll notice is that the data that the chart is using is highlighted. The coordinates for the x-axis are in the purple, and in the blue are the values for the y-axis. Now, once you've selected the chart, you'll notice up at the top there's a contextual ribbon tab that becomes available to you. And in order in, to add a trend line, one way you can do it is by selecting Design, Add Chart Element, and Trend Line. In this case, we've been directed to create a linear trend line, which is the second option. And as soon as we highlight it, you'll see on the chart we now have this trend line. So the trend line is, is showing, simply put, it's the average value that you would expect a plot point to show up. So if our X plot point was 16,000, we would expect, if we go straight vertically up there, we would expect a Y value of somewhere around 265,000 even though we don't actually have those specific plot points. If we did, that's where we would bet that they would show up. So the second way that we can add these, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to erase this one and select none here. And the way that I'm more comfortable with it is um, highlighting one of the plot points on our chart, right-clicking it, and on our contextual menu that pops up, we can add a trend line. When we do that over here in the sidebar, uh, it gives us our options for the different types of trend lines, and we're going to click Linear. Now, you may not want to add this to your chart, but I often like seeing my equation displayed on the chart. Um, that's awfully small here. But that way you can actually see uh, the XY or the, the linear relationship between the X and Y plot points in order to get that trend line. Now, one thing I'll... I'll emphasize in this video that while these are fine examples to learn specific techniques in your charting, please don't consider any of these charts good examples of what a chart should be. Um, they, they range from poor to terrible and what I'll do after we wrap up the last chart in the second video, I'll actually go through a few steps that'll help you make much better visual charts than what these particular examples are. But that wraps up the first task. We'll move on to the second. Now we need to move on to our employees worksheet. And this time we're going to add a logarithmic trend line to the existing chart. So in this case, I'm just going to right click, select add trend line. And instead of linear, so you can actually see what our linear plot line would look like. You'll notice that it's not a real great fit for what our data is. I'm going to select logarithmic. And you'll notice a much tighter fit to our plotted data. We can do the same thing if we want by adding the equation. And so this would be the formula that creates that plot line for us. Now, again, adding this formula is an option. It wasn't required in the task. So on an exam and they ask for a trend line, you don't need to add that. Uh, but I think it's worth knowing uh, how to do that. So that wraps up our second task. Our third task is on the profits worksheet to add a polynomial trend line with an order of two to the upper chart and a polynomial trend line with an order of six to the lower chart. So again, we'll select our chart, right click, click on one of our data points to add the trend line. In this case, we will select a polynomial trend line. So again, with this, it's not a very tight fit to our data points. And the lower table, the lower chart, excuse me, uses the same data. It's the same chart. 
And what we'll do with this time is we will add a trend line here. It will also be polynomial, but our order is going to be six. And now when you look at this trend line, it is, it is well, it's markedly more similar to our data point than what we had before. However, take a look at this. This is what the equation looks like. So those of you that uh, really enjoyed calculus can probably take this apart and understand what it all means. But for a lot of us, um, this isn't going to necessarily mean a whole heck of a lot. Uh, but we do see that the, the sixth order polynomial trend line does fit better than the second order one in our top plot. We'll set the equation as well, just so you can compare the difference between the two of them. So a more complex formula is going to give us a more accurate trend line. All right, our last task is on the forecast worksheet, we'll move to that, to create a linear trend line that extends into the future by four quarters. So again, we'll select our plot, we'll add a trend line and we want it to be linear. We can see it now on our graph. Now, what we want to do is go down here where it says forecast. And this point, we're going to select forward. And now our description says by four quarters. This, this is just periods. But since our periods, we can see from our data table that they are reflective of quarters, we are comfortable knowing that by adding our trend line and that these periods are going to be quarters. So we're going to add this to 4. And now we can see our trend line that before ended at the 12th period now extends further out into the future by an additional four quarters. So that wraps up the tasks for our first video for Objective 4.1. Thanks for watching. And make sure you're subscribed so that you will be notified when I get the second video hopefully in the next 24 to 48 hours here, in which case we're going to go through the last two practice tasks as well. I'll run through a, a quick example of how to improve uh, your charts so that you don't end up with charts that, that look like this and are neither visually pleasing nor are they effective at communicating the meaning of the data that is behind them. This is Craig with Carshalton Advisory. Thanks for watching.